video on Forex here with another tutorial. This time I want to talk some more about some of the theory behind scripting, tell you something more about the used techniques in scripts and introduce another piece of almost any proper script. Today we'll talk about script parameters. This video will be more of an introduction to the concepts of parameters, variables and we will make one very simple example to demonstrate the basic rules. If you wish to see more scripts, examples and something more, let's say advanced, please wait for the second video that I'm working on or if you are watching in the future, just click on the link in the video right now. Ok, so we'll start by writing some basic simple script, something a bit more advanced than our very first script, but not very much. So let's open a script and write a couple of commands. All commands have been mentioned in more than one video, so the script heals the soldier named soldier, moves him to the position of the player, then it waits for 2 seconds and kills him. I hope that is clear already, it's pretty evident just from looking at the commands. Now we have already automatically used a couple of very interesting words here, some that require our attention if we really want to fully understand what is going on in a script. I'm talking about variables here and now let me ask you. How many variables are in the script? 4 or maybe only 2? There's only one variable in the script at this moment and it's soldier. Let me go through the script word by word and I will try to show you why I have chosen this example and why any of this should matter to you. On the first line we start with a variable soldier. It is by definition a variable because its actual value that this word represents can change. If you are a bit familiar with any commands at all, you surely know that if you want to use this command you have to go to the editor and tell the game which of these objects is called soldier, otherwise it will never have a chance to know what you meant by this word. So in this case the word soldier is a variable, completely depending on you and your decision, meaning that only you can decide what it actually means. In this example it represents an actual soldier, so its type is object, an in-game object with some model, animations, some AI, interactions with the world and so on. There are many more variable types and I will get to them as well, but let's continue with the script analysis for now. So the next word is set damage and that is a command, so not much to say here and next we have a number, a zero. It's a static number. Nothing will ever happen to it, so it's not a variable we can move on. The second line is maybe the most interesting one, after that we only have commands and numbers, stuff that we have already seen. Soldier we start again with the already known variable that has been used in the previous command, so it's the very same thing, set pause is again just a command, and then we go position player. The word position by itself isn't a variable, it is a command. But when we are talking about script parameters, we can use it in just the same way. However, I think that it is important that you know this difference, because in some cases and examples it is really very useful to know exactly what you are dealing with. So the position command isn't a variable by itself, you can't change its meaning, you can't decide what exactly it represents. And you also need to define which object it is related to. Of course, you can't calculate the position by itself. It always has to be a position of something, of some object. That object is usually pointed at by a variable. Instead of writing the blue for infantry soldier with its internal ID 17, you can just write soldier. And what about player? I think that the word player is maybe the ideal example to demonstrate the subtle differences between variables and commands with a return value. So based on what we have stated so far, is player a variable or is it a command? Well technically it is a command. You cannot choose who you will call the player, it will always be the user controlled object and the game doesn't need you to choose which object is referred to as a player. On the other hand, this command doesn't need anything else. The word player can stand by itself and it will always return the correct value and it only does one thing. It only returns the actual ID and name of the object which is then handled by the game. So in a way it behaves like a variable. 
This is a very interesting topic and I hope that I will be able to fully demonstrate the differences between commands and variables and how you should approach your problems with them when choosing script parameters and later arguments. Ok, I promise to tell you more about different variable types or data types for that matter, so I'll try my best to show you the most common ones. There aren't that many types, but I'll still want to narrow down this selection to the more used ones just to keep this a bit more simple. If you are interested in knowing all of them, you can head to the wiki page about data types. There you can find a basic description for all of them. Of course, we have the most common ones that form a part of many programming languages as well. Because they simply are needed almost everywhere. Numbers that can represent a real number, that means both integers and floats to a magnificent precision of 7 decimals. Also arrays are present since the very beginnings, capable of storing other values. There are many discussions on the game forums about arrays and their capabilities and it's definitely a big, big topic once you start working with some fine details. Boolean, true or false, don't mistake it with a number, a logical one or zero is something different. Object or group are game specific types, you will probably not find them outside Armor World, at least not in the same way. The in-game objects that you place on the map or the groups that represent the relations between these objects. Strings or some text are also very common in the game. And some more complex data types, code or script for a sequence of commands, config not really used a lot in a normal game a nothing data type that can be used to unassign a value and a couple of other ones, but that isn't really that important. Not really right now. Now let's get back to the script parameters. A script doesn't necessarily need to have all variables static and already given to it. Instead, we can use parameters to substitute some parts of the code with more variables that we will define well after writing the script itself. That way we don't have to tell the script specifically which object to work with and we can change that information every time we launch the script. I think that an example is definitely on place here and I think we could use our script from before. In this script we can replace the variable soldier with a script parameter. Well, a script parameter is always local to the given script, so we will need to add an underscore before all instances of the word soldier. Then we will add a new information on the first line of the script. Underscore soldier equals to underscore this select zero. All the info needed is passed in an array with the name this. We only need one parameter, so we will take the info from the first element of the array, where the script argument will be stored once we launch the script. By doing this, we can define what exactly the soldier variable is when launching the script. Not right now. At this moment, the game doesn't know what soldier is, it just knows that we will tell it when we need to. Let's go back to the editor, load a mission and try to launch the script. We'll use the same command as always, but this time we will use the array for arguments and we will pass the name of the unit to the script. This way, when the game goes through the script, it looks at the first element of the array this which will be a variable pointing to this soldier and then when going through individual commands it will replace each local variable soldier with whatever is in the array. Of course, if we don't tell the game what the parameter soldier is and don't pass any arguments to the script, it will report an error and won't work. Another error is reported when you pass a wrong variable type, for example, instead of typing a name of a soldier, you insert a bunch of numbers. The game expects a variable of the type object and will not accept your data. Let me show you why this is useful and why we have done all of this because at this moment the script behaves exactly the same as before and we didn't really do anything to improve it. Well, let's say that we want to work with more soldiers. Let's place two more soldiers on the map. I'll name one of them Soldier 2. Now we can use the script again, so we'll launch it once with Soldier and once with Soldier 2. As you can see, with only one simple script, we are now working with two units and we didn't have to define anything more to use the second soldier. 
For some reason I don't want to give a name to the third soldier, but that's okay. I can just use his init box to launch the script again, but this time I will use him instead of soldier or soldier 2. Now I can work with three soldiers and I still have my old simple script. And this is the biggest advantage of script parameters. You can quickly change different values, call one script several times with different results and save a lot of work for yourself and potentially for others. I will show you one more example. It will be again a very simple one. We'll be using a command create unit to create soldiers and we'll use a script parameter to define the number of the soldiers created. That way we can use one script to spawn several groups with different numbers of soldiers and there's no need to rewrite anything. Of course, the script isn't fully efficient yet, we could do a lot more stuff in it, but let's leave it for now and as you can see, I have used a script parameter here to set the maximum number of units spawned. Then I made a variable type number, set it to 0 and in the while section I increase the i value by 1 each time until it reaches the maximum number and at that time the script stops spawning new people. I would say that this is a very easy concept where we can demonstrate both using variables productively in a script and we can show off the script parameters and their use. We'll launch the script with a number that is the number of units spawned. That number can be different each time and we are still using one script. Of course a logical expansion for this script would be to pass a location at which the soldiers spawn as another parameter and maybe regulate the maximum number of soldiers to some lower value like 12 being the maximum. That can be easily done just by adding very few lines to the code and of course you can try and improve these scripts yourselves so that they fit your mission's needs. I want to highlight the possibility of adding a location as a parameter to the script. I was talking about differences between commands and variables here and didn't really explain why that is so important. So please bear in mind that you can always pass a variable as an argument, but it's not always the best idea to pass a command, especially a command that executes something. For example, it's an equally good idea to have a parameter soldier and then have a command position to get his position on the map as having a parameter that directly gets a position of an object. The only real difference here is the way you work with the past data. However, a command set damage changes an object and influences the game and it's actually quite awkward to work with in a script when it acts as a parameter. So in the end you should know the difference between a command and a variable but you don't need to be afraid of using both of them in scripts. If a command returns a value, then it works in a very similar fashion as a variable and you end up working with the same data. And in that case, it's up to you what to use. For example, writing position soldier as an argument is the same thing as writing a equals to position soldier and then passing a as a variable to the script. So hopefully this has helped you at least in some way the mentioned examples are below the video in the description. We'll be continuing with script parameters in the next video in which we'll be making two a bit more complex scripts. The release date is most probably two or three weeks from now. So that's it for this video. I hope to see you all in the next one. Comment, like and share and have a great day.